Fatima's Sorrow, Episode 1 Fatima, born in Kaduna, emerged into the world with the promise of simplicity and hard work. At 15, her mind buzzed with the aspirations common to youth, brimming with visions of the life she could carve for herself. Little did she know her destiny had long been etched, veiled from her innocent gaze. Yearning for nothing more than the chance to unfold her potential, Fatima craved the freedom to pursue knowledge and share it with the world. However, fate had woven a different tapestry for her. Unbeknownst to her, her father had woven the threads of an arranged marriage long before her birth, binding her to a path she had not chosen. He was not unkind. He simply believed he was safeguarding her future. Yet the weight of his decision bore heavy on his heart. Now he grappled with the daunting task of revealing this predetermined fate to his beloved daughter. Amidst all the wonders Fatima had ever beheld, the nocturnal sky stood unparalleled in its splendor. The stars shimmered brilliantly that evening, each luminary dot converging in the vast expanse, crafting an exquisite tapestry against the backdrop of darkness. Fatima unlatched her study windows, permitting a gentle breeze to cascade through the chamber, alleviating the lingering warmth of the day. The breeze caressed her skin, imbuing her with a tranquility she cherished. Within the late night stillness, she found solace akin to the calm center of a tempest, shielded from life's tumultuous chaos. Retreating from the window, Fatima settled at her desk with a sigh of contentment, relishing the silence before delving into her history tome. Seated there serenely, traversing the realms from her sanctuary, she found joy. Releasing another wistful sigh, she turned the page to resume the chronicle of the valiant Queen Amina of Zazao, now Zaria, whose legendary valor and exploits captivated her imagination. I wish I could emulate her, Fatima mused dreamily, allowing her imagination to wander, conjuring visions of herself adorned in warrior regalia with a jewel-adorned crown atop her head. Unbeknownst to Fatima, a tempest loomed on the horizon, a storm so formidable it would shatter her dreams and upend the course of her life entirely. Fatima, come here for a moment. Her father's call from the adjacent room jolted her from her reverie. Yes, father, I am coming, she responded, readjusting her spectacles before placing her pencil on the table, marking her progress for later continuation. Fatima understood the importance of promptly heeding her father's summons. Malam Abdul Bada was a stern disciplinarian, brooking no nonsense from anyone, especially his offspring. The solitary instance where Fatima dared to defy her father occurred years prior when she was merely nine. On that fateful day, while engrossed in play with her friends outside their abode, Fatima brazenly ignored her father's call. To cut the long story short, she swiftly learned the consequence of underestimating her father's authority. Should she ever forget, the scars on her right thigh served as a poignant reminder to adhere to the right path. Fatima closed her bedroom door quietly and hastened to her parents' chamber, entering to find them seated adjacent on the couch. Her mother's gaze remained averted, refusing to meet Fatima's eyes, while Malam Bada wore a somber expression that gripped Fatima with apprehension and a hint of fear. Familiar with the gravity of her father's demeanor, she braced herself for the impending conversation. Here I am, father, she announced simply, awaiting with bated breath for the revelation about to unfold. Fatima, Malam Bada commenced, his voice tinged with calm yet unmistakable agitation. Yes, father, she responded tentatively, her affirmation tinged with uncertainty. Whatever transpired, it boded ill. Her father, typically resolute, was visibly perturbed, and her mother's steadfast avoidance of eye contact only heightened her disquiet. Malambada sighed, resuming after a momentary pause. You are fifteen now, and have blossomed into a fine young woman. Ye, yes, Fatima replied hesitantly, her affirmation resembling more of a query than a statement. Her heart raced, sensing the impending gravity of her father's words. You are aware of our customs? He continued, his tone grave. I trust you have been educated in our traditions. Another pause ensued, during which he glanced at his wife for assistance, yet she remained fixated on a spot on the floor, as if unable to meet Fatima's gaze. Fatima's heart seemed to momentarily cease its beat. The only custom her father could allude to was... Malambada drew a deep breath, fixing Fatima with a somber gaze. 
Fatima, you have been betrothed. Fatima's heart skipped, then plummeted, as though sinking to the very depths of her being. The room constricted around her, suffocating her senses. She stole a glance at her mother, her disbelief silently imploring confirmation. Her mother's eyes betrayed a remorseful guilt, confirming Fatima's worst fears. W what do you mean? Fatima stammered, tears welling in her eyes, blurring her vision. It means you are to be wed and soon, Malambada elucidated gravely. Though the words were not unfamiliar, their weight bore down upon Fatima with crushing force. The world seemed to tilt on its axis and she struggled to draw breath. She wished for escape, for the earth to cleave open and swallow her whole. But wishes were futile. She fought the urge to scream at her father, to demand how he could subject her to such a fate. What of her dreams, her aspirations? She had envisioned a future of exploration, of education, of service to humanity. Yes, marriage had lingered on the horizon, but not like this, not arranged. Her marriage was to be her choice, not dictated by others. Yet now those dreams lay shattered, beyond her grasp. What about my education? She protested weakly, her voice trembling with hurt and betrayal as she locked eyes with her father, seeking solace and understanding. Your education is a matter to discuss with your future husband. I understand this is difficult. Mother, please, Fatima implored, turning to her with pleading eyes. I am sorry, Fatima. The die is cast. Her mother apologized, her gaze downcast in submission. But, Fatima's voice faltered. No buts, Fatima, Malambada interjected firmly. This betrothal was set long before your birth, and our family honors its commitments. We will not falter now. Fatima was stunned. Grappling for words, anguish mingled with despair, kindling a flicker of anger within her breast. Is this true? She demanded, her eyes meeting her parents through her glasses. Her mother awaited her father's confirmation. Yes, Fatima, it is true. You have lived by the teachings of the Quran, and you understand the sanctity of promises. Her father affirmed resolutely. While his words rang true, they offered little solace. A promise withheld from her was no promise at all. It was unjust. It was cruel. Why was such a promise made? Fatima's voice trembled. Silence was her only reply. Will his family accommodate my illness? She ventured, her desperation shifting tactics. Do they know of my condition? Do not worry, my dear. All will be well. Her father reassured, attempting to infuse his tone with comfort. A heavy silence descended, thick with tension. Fatima felt suffocated, trapped within the tumult of her thoughts. The eye of the storm had passed. Now she stood alone in the hurricane's Fatima, stirred from slumber early the next morning, greeted by a throbbing headache. Sleep had eluded her, granting only a fleeting respite. Despite the weariness weighing upon her, she resisted the allure of her bed's warmth. Education trumped comfort always. So with resolve, Fatima rose to prepare for school. Her shower lasted a mere ten minutes, and she swiftly donned the brown and white uniform she had laid out the night prior. Fetching her glasses, she emerged from her room to find her father settled in his chair, engrossed in a newspaper. This world worsens with each passing day, he remarked, eyeing an article detailing yet another harrowing case of assault against a young woman. Fatima shuddered at the grim reality depicted and averted her gaze. Dad, I'm ready for school she announced, gesturing towards her backpack. Malambada folded the newspaper with a smile. Ah, my dear, he began, but was interrupted by Hajiya Bintu's call from the kitchen. That's good to hear, he concluded, patting Fatima's head before rising to join his wife. Shortly after, her mother entered the living room inquiring, Fatima, are you leaving for school soon? Fatima nodded. Yes, I'm all set and will depart shortly. Her mother frowned shaking her head. Without breakfast, please wait, it'll be ready soon, she insisted before retreating to the kitchen. I can't afford to wait, mom. I'll be reprimanded if I'm late and there are activities scheduled before class, Fatima pleaded urgently. Hajia Bintu turned back, her disappointment evident. Fatima, you know well that neglecting your health will only lead to illness. Your well-being comes first. With a resigned sigh, Fatima agreed to wait. After a brief interval, Haji Abintu ushered her into the kitchen, urging her to eat and retrieve her packed lunchbox. Fatima hurriedly consumed her meal and after a few minutes prepared to depart.
She bid farewell to her parents with hugs and waves before almost exiting the kitchen when her father interjected. Fatima. She halted, pivoting to face him. Yes, sir. Regarding our conversation last night, he paused, seemingly grappling with his words. After a moment, he continued. Inshallah, your intended and his family will visit this afternoon. Could you please return home early after school to meet them? Instantly, nerves fluttered within Fatima, but she quelled them swiftly. Of course, Dad, she affirmed with a nod. He merely smiled, his attention returning to the newspaper spread before him. With that, Fatima departed for school, her thoughts consumed by the impending meeting awaiting her that afternoon. Fatima arrived at school promptly in the morning. Yusuf Dangote High School, nestled in the heart of Kaduna, welcomed students of diverse faiths and tribes. Spotting her class teacher, Mr. Sani, stationed at the gate with a cane in hand, Fatima's heart fluttered with apprehension. His stern countenance instilled fear, for tardiness equated to significant trouble. Yet, to her relief, Mr. Sani spared her, allowing her passage without reprimand. Grateful, Fatima offered her thanks and hurried into the school compound, silently praising God for the day Mr. Sani discovered her condition as a sickle cell patient. At the assembly ground, Fatima encountered her classmate and best friend Memuna already in line. Hey, Fatima, Memuna greeted enthusiastically. How are you today? I'm fine, and you? Fatima replied. Never better. Have you finished your economics assignment as? Fatima inquired, though she knew she shouldn't have. Memuna grinned mischievously. Nope, not yet. Why bother when I have a genius friend who's willing to share? Fatima shook her head playfully, teasing Memuna. Who said I've done it? I was at the hospital over the weekend, so I couldn't. A flicker of panic crossed Memuna's face. You're kidding, Fatima smiled. Just pulling your leg. It's in my bag. You can copy it, but you'll need to do it before first period. Relieved, Memuna chuckled. You shouldn't tease me like that, but thanks anyway. Amidst laughter, they resumed following the assembly proceedings. After approximately 20 minutes, the assembly disbanded and students dispersed to their respective classrooms. Memuna and Fatima sought a secluded spot for Memuna to transcribe the assignment before heading to their class. Finding shade beneath an almond tree by the canteen, Memuna settled down to work, transcribing from Fatima's notebook. As Fatima observed her friend writing, her mind drifted to the daunting new development in her life. She decided to confide in her friend, knowing she'd need a supportive shoulder when the time came. Memuna, I won't be staying for lessons today. I need to head home early because we're expecting visitors. Memuna paused, glancing up. Visitors? What kind? Fatima sighed deeply. You won't understand now, but I promise to explain everything soon. Memuna regarded Fatima with a puzzled expression before finally replying. Okay, but don't keep me waiting too long, all right? Yes, I promise. Sounds good then. Memuna finished her work and rose from the bench. All set. Let's head to class. It's almost time for first period. Fatima arrived home promptly changed out of her school uniform. Feeling famished, she ventured into the kitchen to prepare some instant noodles. Sated and slightly rested, Fatima returned to the kitchen and noticed a note left by her mother on the countertop. Haji Abintu had instructed Fatima to prepare a meal for their forthcoming guests. Without delay, Fatima set to work, quickly whipping up Tuo Shinkafa, a local delicacy made from rice. Once done, she reheated the Mayan Tushi soup her mother had prepared earlier on the electric stove. Setting the table in the dining room, she placed both dishes in the oven to keep them warm. Feeling a wave of exhaustion wash over her, Fatima retired to her room and soon fell asleep. She woke to the sound of her mother repeatedly calling her name. Mom, I'm coming! She called out, rising from bed to open her bedroom door. Offering her mother a greeting, she listened as Haja Bintu spoke. Walaikum salam, Fatima. I've been knocking for a while now, her mother began. I apologize, mum. I was exhausted from preparing the meal you asked for, Fatima explained. May Allah reward you, my dear. You look worn out. Should I give you a massage to help you feel better? I'm all right, mum. No need, Fatima assured her. Regardless, let me help. We have important guests coming, and it wouldn't do if you were unwell. Resigned, Fatima acquiesced and led her mother back into her room. 
Fatima and Hajja Bintu remained in the bedroom, chatting and giggling like the closest of friends. Indeed, the massage from her mother had left Fatima feeling incredibly relaxed. Suddenly they heard the front door unlock, followed by Malam Bada's excited voice announcing his arrival. I'm home. Fatima sprang out of bed and hurried to the living room to greet her father. How was your day, dad? she exclaimed, enveloped in his embrace. It was fine, dear. Is your mother back yet? Malam Bada replied, planting a kiss on his daughter's forehead. Yes, she's inside. Just then, Hajja Bintu entered the living room and greeted her husband with a kiss. Assalamu alaikum, sweetheart. Welcome. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, honey. How was your day? I hope it wasn't too stressful. Hajja Bintu inquired, guiding him to a seat before gently massaging his shoulders. Not at all. I came back early because of the visitors we're expecting. All right, dear. Hajja Bintu continued the massage. Malam Bada groaned in pleasure. Hmm, Gaskia, that feels good, dear, he murmured. Fatima, you have to make Fatima look very nice this afternoon. My princess must look even more beautiful than she already does, Malambada said, still enjoying the massage. Hajia Bintu nodded, checking her watch. Subhanallah, it's almost time. Didn't you say our visitors would arrive by five? Yes, I was informed they'd be here by five, Malambada confirmed. Hajia Bintu ceased the massage, rising from her seat. Come, sweetie, let's get you ready. We don't have much time left, she urged, beckoning Fatima to join her. Fatima hesitated, feeling reluctant to undergo the makeover. Dad, I think I look fine just the way I am, she protested. I know, darling, but you need to look a bit more attractive, Malambada insisted. Okay, Fatima sighed, resigning herself to the inevitable. She turned to her mother, who awaited her impatiently. Let's go. Danala, make it snappy. Don't spend the whole evening in there, Malambada pleaded. Haba, don't worry, we'll be out in no time, Hajja Bintu assured him, leading Fatima into her room. Several minutes later, they emerged, Fatima adorned in a beautiful black abaya with gold trimmings, complemented by light makeup enhancing her features. A crisp white hijab completed her attire. Her mother, too, had changed into a similar outfit, albeit with a brown hijab and heavier makeup. Masha Allah! Malambada exclaimed upon seeing them. You both look beautiful. Half an hour later, their visitors arrived. Malambada ushered them into the living room, offering seats. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, madam. Please come in and make yourself comfortable, Malambada greeted warmly. Mrs. Danjuma, accompanied by her son Mrs. Danjuma and a couple of relatives, entered the house exchanging pleasantries. Walikum salam wa rahmatullahi, sir. A good evening to you too, Mrs. Danjuma replied. We hope we haven't troubled you by arriving late. There was so much traffic on our way here. No problem, ma'am. What matters is that you made it here, Malambada assured her. Thank you, sir, Mrs. Danjuma said, proceeding to introduce her son Jubril as the intended groom. The story continues. Watch out for episode two. Thank you for watching and we hope you have learned something from our stories. Please write in the comment box and also please subscribe to our channel for more captivating and educative folktale stories. See you in the next story.